In my opinion, it's the creme de la creme and we don't want that, do we? Now, I know I've just said don't eat. Also, don't give it to your dog. Are you trying to lose weight? Have you got a few pesky pounds that you just can't lose because your carb or sugar cravings are getting the better of you? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you about five game-changing foods that you can eat when you're on the diet, which will help you lose weight and keep those cravings at bay. Now, before we get into the video, just a quick caveat. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not scientifically or medically trained. I'm just an over 60 woman who wants to keep her weight in check and stay healthy well into her 70s and beyond. And just a quick warning that some of these foods are not suitable for vegans, although they are suitable for vegetarians. And all the research that I've used to compile this video will be listed and linked below. So without further ado, let's crack on. So let's start with xylitol or erythritol. Now xylitol is an ingredient found in chewing gum, which is how I discovered it. Partly because I was looking for something that wasn't stevia or one of those other sugar substitutes like aspartame because I can taste them a mile off. I wanted something that tasted like sugar but without the calories. And having examined my favourite chewing gum in great detail, I discovered that xylitol was the key ingredient. And when I discovered that it was available in my local supermarket, I knew I had to give it a try. Now, xylitol occurs naturally in small amounts in plums, in strawberries, in cauliflower and in pumpkins. And humans and many other animals produce trace amounts when they are consuming carbs. Now, the way xylitol is produced and erythritol as well means that it looks a lot like granulated sugar. And what's really great about it is it almost tastes exactly like sugar, but not quite as sweet. And I don't think you would notice any difference if you sweetened your porridge or oatmeal with it or anything else that you might add sugar to. You can even use it for baking, although you might have to adjust the amount of the other ingredients. And it's also been shown in studies to be beneficial for our teeth, hence its inclusion in chewing gum. And it's also helpful to diabetics who want to sweeten their food. Now, erythritol is very similar to xylitol and you can also use it in baking and cooking. I do have a sweet tooth, although it is lessening a little as I get older. And if I'm really craving something sweet, I will have some yogurt poured over some frozen fruit, of which more later, and sprinkled with some xylitol. And that just does the trick. Now, a couple of things to note about xylitol. Don't overdo it, as it can cause some unpleasant side effects of the stomach, if you know what I mean. Also, don't give it to your dog. Now, the next food I want to talk about, which will help you when you're on a diet, is frozen fruit. Now, let me tell you why. About 15 years ago, I went to a diet specialist and she recommended freezing medjool dates. Now, I actually actively dislike those kind of dates, but I thought I'd try some other frozen fruit. And oh my gosh, what a discovery. For example, frozen bananas. So yummy with Greek yogurt. And more of that later too or frozen raspberries or blueberries with my morning muesli, or even frozen grapes or cherries in the summer when you're looking for a cooling snack. Now, why do I say frozen fruit and not the unfrozen variety? Well, for two reasons, really. One is because the fruit often tastes better when it's frozen. So, for example, when you buy fresh blueberries or fresh raspberries, you often find that there are a few that are a bit mushy, a little bit soft, a little bit tasteless. Whereas if you freeze all the fruit as soon as you buy it, and by the way, only freeze your own fruit. Don't buy the frozen variety because they're much too watery. If you buy fresh fruit and freeze it yourself, it tastes so much better. You just know that when you are using that frozen fruit, that it will be of good quality. It'll all be the same. You won't taste any mushy ones. And actually with bananas, it works particularly well. Because if you've got some bananas on the turn, you know, they've started to go a little bit brown and you're not sure whether you want to eat them put them in the freezer. Make sure you peel them first, but put them in the freezer and you can cut them in half before you do that if you don't think you'll want a whole banana. And then put some of that on your breakfast cereal. Oh, it's so delicious. And also in the summer, when it's hot, you can put some of your frozen fruit, and I do this all the time, in my sparkling water to make the water taste a little bit more interesting and of course make it cooler, just like you would with ice cubes. Now, the other reason I really like frozen fruit is it gives food texture and bite. And that is what can often be missing with diety type foods. What I don't want is a liquid. I want something to crunch on. 
I mean, I'm not a smoothie fan, although of course you can make smoothies with frozen fruit. I want to feel like I'm satisfied, like I've really eaten something rather than drunk something. Frozen fruits fit that bill perfectly. Now, my dentist isn't a fan of me eating frozen fruit, but I usually let the fruit just thaw that tiny bit before I eat it so that it's not too harsh on my teeth. And of course, there are very few calories in berries, so you can derive satisfaction from eating crunchy, satisfying food without piling on the pounds. Now, the next food that has been an absolute game changer for me and is really good for you is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is the most delicious, filling, satisfying yogurt that you can buy. In my opinion, it's the creme de la creme of yogurts, so to speak, particularly when it's 5% fat. Now, what's different about Greek yogurt? Well, it's thicker than regular yogurt, and that's because it's strained, the whey is removed, and it contains more milk than regular yogurt because of the way it's made. It's also good for your microbiome because it's a type of probiotic. Now, Greek yogurt is thought, and I stress the word thought here as more research is needed, to support the good bacteria in your gut. Now, I'm talking about unsweetened, plain Greek yogurt here, not the sweetened, fruity kind. But I do find that Greek yogurt is so much more satisfying than the regular type of plain yogurt. And that's because, as I say, it's thick, it's creamy, it's got more milk in it, which gives it that thickness, that sort of voluptuousness, if you like. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why am I recommending this as a dieter's best friend when it's so laden with milk, which has calories in it? Well, I say it's because you need less of it to feel full. Now, I eat it every single day with my muesli. I even put a little bit on my porridge if I'm having porridge or oatmeal. And I even add it to my Christmas pudding instead of cream. And if you're trying to cut down on your calories and eat food that's good for your gut, this is the one to try. Now, the next food I want to recommend are broad or fava beans. Oh, I used to hate broad beans, hated them. When I was a child, it's probably due to the way they were cooked because we overcooked everything back in the day. But now they're my absolute go-to veg if I'm looking for something starchy and satisfying to go in a stir fry or as an accompaniment to my meat or veg dish. They're higher in fibre than potatoes, but with a lower glycemic index, meaning that they won't give you a sugar spike. They're a great alternative. Now, don't get me wrong, I love potatoes. But if I want to keep my blood sugar stable with the fibre rich filling vegetables, I'll go for broad beans anytime. So how do I eat them? Well, one of my favourite lunches is to do a stir fry with some mushrooms and peppers, maybe an aubergine, maybe a courgette. And then I'll cook the broad beans separately. Then I'll add them to the stir fry and serve with a little bit of feta cheese sprinkled over the top. And that is a very satisfying and nutritious lunch or dinner, but without the sugar spike. If you really hate broad beans, then try some frozen peas to sprinkle them over the top of the stir fry. No need to cook them first. Or you could also try Brussels sprouts, but you will need to cook those first. All these veggies are satisfying and healthy for your blood, your gut and your heart. Now, the fifth and final category of foods that I want to talk to you about are pasta, rice and potatoes. Now, I know I've just said don't eat potatoes, but hear me out. Some small studies are showing that if you pre-cook potatoes, rice and pasta and actually frozen bread, if you, if you toast that straight from frozen, it cuts down on the glucose in your blood that would normally be caused by you eating that type of food. Now, why is that a good thing? Well, a spike in our blood sugar levels can cause us all sorts of problems. Too much sugar in your blood thickens it and causes a sugar rush, followed by a sugar crash, causing cravings and tiredness. Now, to quote from MD Anderson's Cancer Centre, in the long term, repeated spikes in your blood sugar can cause heart problems, kidney problems, problems with your eyesight, and nerve issues like neuropathy, where you lose feelings in your fingers and toes. And we don't want that, do we? But since most of us love potatoes, pasta, rice, and bread, it makes sense to try this method because we don't want to give them up if we don't have to. Why not eat them once cooled and reheated? This is what I do on most days. So for example, if I'm cooking some pasta for me and my husband, I'll cook my pasta in advance, I'll rinse it under the cold tap, I'll then put it away in the fridge to cool it completely, and then later on I'll come along and cook his pasta and reheat mine in the microwave. 
Now for rice, I'll do exactly the same, only just be careful that you do cool it very quickly after you've cooked it. Don't let it sit around as leftovers, just to be safe. Because there are some studies that are showing that you can get food poisoning if the rice has been lying around for too long and then it's been reheated. I also do this with bread. I freeze bread, particularly dark rye, which I like very much, and then I pop it straight in the toaster from frozen. So there you have it. Those are my five game changers for keeping your weight down and staying healthy and well. So what do you think? Would you try any of these? Do you try them? What tips and tricks do you use to try and keep your weight healthy and stable? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, giving it a thumbs up and hitting the notification bell. I'd be so grateful. It really helps support my small channel. And thanks again so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.